Are we All ready right. to go? We're ready. All right. All right. Hi, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, excited to kind of introduce some of the things that we do at ArborJet in Ecology, um, as well as um, give you some input into what you could be doing for your businesses um, and some of the tools that we have. So uh, really wanted to, to give a little more insight into some of the tools that are available to you um, and ways that you can, you know, you know uh, really work in the plant health care industry in terms of uh, marketing ideas um, based on what your strategy is and what, what's going to work best for your business uh, with the resources that you have. Um, so I'm going to go through some tools, um, some of the assets that we offer, um, and then as Kara said, uh, we will have a little discussion at the end. Um, and if you do have something that is really working for you, um, we really want to hear about that. Um, especially anything that, that um, might be something that uh, you would like from us to do, to do more of. So um, oh, well, let's get started. All right. Um, so let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm, I'm Kristen, and I've been working for ArborJet for about five years now. I started off as um, uh, more of a product manager. And as things have progressed, uh, I'm now working with um, all the lines that we have. Um, and then uh, Sarah was brought into the, the fold um, when we uh, acquired in 2018 uh, Collagel uh, Solutions. Uh, they also have their line of BioPro products uh, that are used uh, primarily for in fertilization and soil enhancement. And um, so we you know, really now are a lot more than a tree um, a tree-focused company uh, with the partnership with the Collagel. Um, we also have products that are um, organic or um, have a sustainable approach. Um, so we're doing a lot, uh, a lot more from when I first started, even just five years ago. Uh, really grown um, as a company, and but we've committed uh, to you know have an environmental responsibility um, and um, you know really try to. to pull that across all of our product lines. Um, as you can see, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary. So really excited about that. Um, we've come a long way and um, you know, we've done a lot of growth as well on our marketing side of our business. Um, so excited about, um, you know, to show you what we can, what we've been offering, you know, available to offer for you. So one of the things that um, I wanted to kind of get into right off the bat was what's gonna work for you. So I want you to think about this in a real practical sense because as you know, ArborJet, we're able to, you know, we have a digital marketing specialist. Uh, we have somebody who does our emails. We have, uh, like Kara, Kara was talking about, so Kara does our emails. She does um, a lot of our website work. Uh, we have somebody who does um, our blog posting and social media, video editing and posting. Um, you know, we have a content calendar. We have uh, a lot of plans and resources. We have, Zach does a lot of our um, Google AdWords. Um, so, we, you know, we have a decent amount of resources, but we still also hire uh, another couple of people to help us. So we work with uh, an outside firm to help us develop content and um, design. Um, they do a lot of work on our website. Uh, they help us with product launches. Um, so we're constantly interacting with them and, and, um, and we also have somebody who does PR for us. So what I'm trying to say is I want you to think about even as a, a larger company, we're still using outside tools. So don't expect that you're going to be able to do everything yourself and um, it's okay to not do that. Um, so one of the things that, that you should be thinking about is what is a, a practical uh, investment um, that you, you can make to marketing it's for marketing your business. Um, it really can vary depending on the mindset of, um, uh, you know, of your company. So what is important to you? Uh, there should always be a certain percentage that goes to marketing, uh, but you just need to figure out what that, you know, what that should be. Um, and maybe you would prefer to put that towards somebody that is an internal resource, um, but you can absolutely utilize outside resources for this too. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot uh, of, of people that can really help you, even if it's just to, 
help put together content calendars or a business plan or help you get to know who your, you know, your actual customer is and what they want. And maybe, or maybe they can help you think about, um, hey, this is an area that has more money than another place. Um, maybe they're more uh, likely to spend it, but they don't have any pest issues. So if I'm selling plant health care and there's no, there's no issue in that area, I might not want to bother spending my time because maybe it, there's nothing that um, I, can, I can sell to them for. So um, don't be afraid to, to look for outside people to help you figure those things out. Um, but certainly there might be somebody in your arsenal internally that has some of these skills to be able to help you. Um, think about too, as a, as a um, plant healthcare business, you're gonna have people, whether it's yourself or people that you have hired that are going to have um, a lot of education on the topic. So can you utilize them to, uh, you know, when they're out in the field, take a picture of what's going on and, and then give you a little content or maybe they can put something on social media around what they're seeing. So maybe it's um, a picture of a, a diseased tree. Um, they can put write up a little thing, hey, next time we can treat this, uh, you know, ahead of time for, um, you know, for the right price or whatever. So something to think about there. I really, um, I just really want to instill that uh, different companies are going to have different goals and different um, uh, viewpoints of what's important. And so I think the, the main thing for you is just figuring out what is the, um, the goal of having some sort of marketing. And, um, and then from there, once you pick what's right for you, um, investing in that. Okay. So this is a, a, a little bit of, you know, a nice little sampling of some of the things that you should be considering. Um, number one, website all day. Most important thing is have a website. Um, from there, then you can, you can uh, get your message out um, and, and direct people back to that place. Um, and so email is also very important. Um, I like social media because it's pretty easy um, in the sense that pretty much anybody can do it. And are, there's a lot of things that are um, accessible to anybody um, in terms of like analytics and what's going on. It's also pretty cheap to advertise. So if you want to get the word out to people, you don't have to spend a lot of money. So I like that. Videos I really like too. That's really, that's what people are interested in. Um, especially if they're on social media, there's a lot of people viewing videos. Um, and the nice thing about videos nowadays too, is they don't have to be like these big, huge productions. They can be something that you do on your phone and it's going to get just as much engagement depending on kind of how it's, uh, uh, positioned. Um, and then, uh, you know, blog could be a good, a good tool, especially as a, um, an industry that relies on some education. Um, and also has a lot of educated people in it. So there's a, there's a little bit more of a process and a sell with uh, a plant healthcare component because it's, it's not necessarily, oh, I, need, I just need this to look good um, or I need this service. People don't necessarily know they need a service. So you have to educate them. Um, so a blog could be a nice opportunity to do that. Um, AdWords, SEO, AdWords, um, I'm not going to expect most people to do much with this because there's, you know, it's a whole other world. But when it comes down to it, you have that website and you put in a few key things, like a couple keywords, um, then it's going to be a, a useful tool. Print ads um, are still very um, applicable because, um, you know, we get so inundated with in the digital world. Um, so we still do a little bit of that ourselves. Um, you know, I, I think it just adds to the, like to be in a nice mix. Um, and then on that front too, any kind of printed materials. So the items I have starred here um, are some items that we're gonna talk about a little bit further. I'm gonna dive into a little bit more. And then they're also, um, you know, kind of some things that we can actually help you with as well. So on the website front, I kind of touched on a couple things here. I think what's really important about your website is, is it, what is it saying about you? And, um, you know, what's the, this is your opportunity to really give your value proposition. So 
Um, you know, are you competing with a lot of people in a certain area? Uh, what makes you different? Do you maybe provide or, uh, organic services? Or are you the only person that provides tree injection? Um, and what's the benefit to, to doing that? Um, so this is your chance to, to really kind of shine um, and have some what we call CTAs, so call to action. And what's nice about that, it's, it's like learn more, call us, fill out this contact form. Um, it, you have opportunities there for people to reach out and, and then therefore um, spend money with you. Um, and this is also the best way for you to make sure that you're on Google. So is, can somebody go to Google and, and you know, or, you know, hey Google or hey Siri, can they go and then can they find you? Um, the other thing that's, that's interesting there too is um, you want to make sure that your phone number is clickable. So if they go to Google, they find you, can they just, if they're on their phone because everyone's on their on mobile device these days. Can you, can you go there and can you click on it and can they call you or can they go to your website? Um, so you just need to make it as easy as possible. And I think the first thing you can do is, that, is do that with a website. Um, I touched on AdWords SEO. I think really what's important is, um, is getting some of those keywords in there. So what are the things that, that um, people are kind of looking for or that you're, you're doing with your business? Um, chances are, as you sort of write up a little bit of content about, about what you do, you're going to be using those keywords. So if somebody were to um, type in treatment for spotted lanternfly, um, as long as you have treatment for spotted lanternfly somewhere in your website, uh, you're increasing your chances of getting seen. Um, granted, that's sort of a tricky one because there's a lot of, um, you know, educational content out there, but um, and then blog. So it kind of touched on that as well. You know, that's not for everybody. I certainly, um, it's not easy to write blog content. Um, but potentially if you have a, somebody who, who likes to write a little bit, um, or even maybe you just have uh, somebody who takes a lot of pictures of what you're doing, uh, a blog might, might be a nice place to put that information. Um, and, uh, from there, you know, you can easily share that content into social media place, you know, places or in the email. Um, so you may want to, if you do want to have a blog component, you might want to consider something like a WordPress um, site. So basically kind of based on the needs that you have um, will help you determine which kind of uh, platform you should be using for your website. Um, I find that Squarespace was a really easy thing to use in the past. Um, as well as Wix, uh, we use WordPress at Arborjet. Um, and, and part of that was initially because of the blog component on that functionality that it offers. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a nice, a nice option. Um, and just remember too that when you're picking a website, it's good to use one, some of these um, that are a little bit more well known, mostly because they're gonna have a lot more functionality to make sure that things look good on different types of devices. So um, when you're using, a lot of times people aren't on their computer, they are right now, I guess, but um, for the most part, people are gonna be on their phones or I mean, tablets or smaller devices. So you wanna make sure that it's gonna look good. Um, Sarah, anything to add on that front? Um, sorry, Chris and I was muted. Um, no, I think that you pretty much touched on everything with regards to the website management. Okay. Um, okay, so on to um, email marketing. So one of the, I'm going to have Sarah talk a little bit more about this. She's got a little more experience um, with uh, Constant Contact. Um, however, we use uh, Pardot and actually uh, Kara can chime in as well. Um, so that's, Pardot is what we use. It's, it's connected with Salesforce. So it's connected with our um, CRM, which is basically a way that we uh, maintain all of the data on um, our customers. And distributors, and um, so we, you know, that we utilize that space um, to keep track of how we interact with you, um, as well as um, uh, you know having emails and being able to um, get you the information that you need to get to, uh, based on the type of business um, that you are. So, um, one of the great things about email marketing is it really allows for a targeted message. Um, and, and it's going to very specific people. So um, 
you can, based on your demographic of your customer base, um, you can send out a, a message that um, is, you know, relative to how they may want to get a message from you. Or um, maybe one area is particularly, um, uh, you know, maybe it's really a, a wet area. And so you see a lot more disease area, you know, issues than in um, another place. So you can target that message um, kind of based on what's going on and pretty quickly get things out. Um, that's one thing as a plant care, plant healthcare industry is that things are always changing. Um, so we always have kind of new things that pop up. Um, maybe usually a certain pest emerges um, at, at one time, um, but maybe this year the weather is a little warmer. It's happening a little sooner. You want to be able to get that message out and say, hey, we need to treat now. Um, let's schedule this. Or we, we want to schedule something for next year. Let's treat... Um, uh, let's talk now or let's let's treat in the fall to help prevent those spring issues. So um, you can really like this uh, ability to quickly and uh, very specifically connect with your um, your customer base. Um, and we have some templates um, that you can utilize yourself or you can you know kind of make the you know this your, on your own. Um, and Sarah, I'm gonna let you kind of talk to that a little bit. Sure. Thanks, Kristen. Um, so one of the things that we've created are some templates that are JPEGs. Um, as simple as just being able to drop the image into your email and then um, right click it, add a hyperlink if you want to be able to send customers to get more information on that subject or if there's a learn more button. Um, you can hyperlink that to a video, to your website, to our website, uh, to specific blog pages. Um, you know, sky's the limit as far as that's concerned. Um, and one of the things we wanted to talk about is ways to very simply and, and fairly inexpensively um, upgrade your email marketing by utilizing a, a customer a relationship management tool like Constant Contact or MailChimp. Those tools give you the ability to add your list in. You can segment your list by if you offer residential services as well as commercial um, services, you could segment your list so that you're, you're giving very targeted specific information to each of the different customer bases. Um, you can track who's opening, who's reading, who's clicking on the links um, to get more engagement. See, you know, see which of your customers are engaged, uh, which, which of them are uh, picking up on some of the services that you're offering and are showing interest in those. And maybe that's something that your techs or yourself can go out and talk to that customer about in person. It gives you the ability to have that tracking, have that data and, and information. Um, Constant Contact and MailChimp are two that, that I would recommend to get started with, both of which are very easy to learn. It doesn't take much to figure out how to utilize them. They have templates available. Um, you can just follow the template. You can drop in your logo, drop in images. Um, for those of you that are a bit more web savvy, we also have the ability to um, provide you with HTML code from our templates so that you can manipulate that code yourself if there's things that you want to change. Uh, but for those that are looking for the simple option, those JPEGs work really well. It's just drop it into the to the to the block, um, add in your logo, add in the the, the hyperlink, and and you're off to the races. Constant Contact starts for about twenty dollars a month um, as their lower level tier, um, and Mailchimp has a completely free option that starts, I believe, up to two thousand contacts. You can have a completely free option that gives you the ability to 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 send those emails out. Um, and both of those programs have options to automate your emails. So rather than having to, every time you wanna sit down and write one, be in front of the computer and, and uh, you know, spending the time right then, if you've got some downtime, perhaps now as people are home um, you know, with, with the COVID situation, you can pre-write some of your emails and, and have them scheduled to go out when you know things are typically relevant for this season or, or if you have a, programs and promotions that you run uh, regularly um, each year, you can have those pre-scheduled so that they go out automatically. Uh, Sarah, they offer, um, so if somebody were to click on an email, would they get another email? Do, do they offer that sort of feature? Um, I'm not 100% sure if they offer the, uh, where you can, you know, have the, the schedule go based on that, you know, where you're, mm -hmm. you're automating it that way. I yeah. do know they do give you the ability to automate based on a time frame. Cool. Yeah. So that's one of the benefits of using Pardot for us is that we can set up um, 
campaigns where if um, if you click on something, then you'll get another email in about a week or so. Um, or if you you know you take certain actions, and then there's other actions that uh, we can set up to have happen, um, which is pretty neat as well. But once again, uh, you don't have to go there right away. Um, you can you can kind of start off with with something as um, more like a constant contact. All right, and we're going to show you some more examples of what we offer in terms of templates um, and uh, to get you started on that as well. All right, I'm going to go to the next. Social media. So, you know, social media can be very overwhelming. There's a lot to choose from. There's so many different platforms. So it can be really difficult to figure out uh, where does it make sense for, for me to be? And um, so one of the things that I would recommend is looking at where your customers um, tend to spend their time. Um, and actually, uh, there are ways that I know with Facebook, you can do some things now where you can upload uh, some email addresses and uh, they'll tell you um, information, uh, I think kind of based on more on like age and like wh who are the types of people that are similar on their platform. Uh, to the people that you are uploading. So there are ways that you can kind of get a feel for the platforms in terms of who's on there and what, you know, what they're um, interested in. Uh, if you think about um, Facebook, for instance, it's getting to be a little bit of an older demographic. It might be a good thing. Um, we tend to uh, utilize Facebook for um, kind of a catch-all. It's, it's a nice platform to be able to include links, uh, photos, videos, um, blog posts. Um, so that one's a nice one for kind of really uh, sampling out a mixture of our content. Um, we also like Instagram. That was newer for us in the last like three or four years. And uh, we found that that's really been a great way for us to engage uh, with our video and um, imagery. So sometimes it's as simple as uh, a picture of a bug or um, you know, something that's going on at a show and it really uh, can get a lot of engagement. So if your viewer, um, viewers tend to be a little bit more, uh, maybe a little younger or they're more interested in some of the video stuff or, um, you know, you, you can utilize the Instagram for, for some of that. The nice thing about Instagram too is it's really easy to, um, and Facebook for that matter, is to advertise. So you can boost your, um, your ads uh, your post um, rather um, for pretty short money. Um, I mean, it can be as low as like 30 bucks and you can reach thousands and thousands of people. Um, you may not want to get that many people. Maybe you're trying to, you can target a very specific area. So um, it's really easy to play around with, not spend too much money um, and get a lot of uh, reach out of your brand. Um, we like LinkedIn as well. Um, it's really more of a place for sort of more professional about the company type of contact content. Um, but again, it's a it's typically a more um, a little bit of an older clientele. So that's a great place as well, potentially um, for it, uh, Sarah. When I were talking earlier, she made a good point. Like if your your um, business is primarily primarily uh, focused towards commercial. Um, uh, locations, so bigger properties, you're not really selling um, and working with homeowners, then you might want to be on LinkedIn because that's where uh, those, those people are, that run those businesses are going to be, maybe perhaps then um, like Facebook um, or Twitter. Um, but, you know, you have to kind of poke around a little bit, see where people are, make sure that it's the, the type of people that you want to be messaging to. And, um, and then just kind of go for it. And you can always start small. So with, with the partnership, um, for instance, our partnership platforms, we decided to start with um, Instagram and Facebook. So the Arborgetti College of Platforms are, we're starting there. And at some point, uh, we'd like to look into expanding that, but uh, we want to make sure that we can uh, manage it properly without overwhelming ourselves um, and be able to continue to put content on, on all the platforms that we, we utilize. Um, so, uh, Sarah, do you want to touch on anything else there? Just that that's a, another, um, when you're, when you are giving your touches to customers, if you're sending out email or even on, um, invoices or leave behinds, 
Um, leaving your social media links is an easy way to ask them to engage with you and ask them to follow you. And, and that can be a great tool to put up updates if you do have a particular weather issue that you're treating for or a particular pest um, that you're treating for right then. Social media is a great way to get information out immediately. Um, so if you can get your customers to engage and follow you on your social media channels, you may find an increase in add-on services of things that you're offering right now for a specific issue. Mm, that's a great point. Um, and I, I also want to touch on the video thing a little bit too on this because this is a great place to put video content out there. And like I said, it can be videos that are done on your phone. Um, those, the Facebook Live stuff, uh, the Instagram Live, I mean, all of that, you can just do it right on the spot. Um, and you can utilize hashtags and tag people, uh, you know, tag us, please do. And uh, it gives us and all of us an opportunity to engage uh, with each other uh, and for your, um, those viewers to be able to see what, what you have going on. Um, and it's a real personal touch. Uh, and that's what's kind of nice too about some of those videos that are kind of just somebody holding it up uh, in, you know, in front of their, their uh, face. Uh, it, it does add a nice personal aspect to it. And I think that's something that's really hard these days, especially as we're in situations where, uh, you know, everything is screen time right now. So, all right. So um, our, oh, this one I had did some animation, Let's see if it works. So um, I wanted to show a few examples of um, some uh, people that, that work with us on the um, tree care side, the business. And they um, have done a nice job of just sort of, once again, engaging with us on social media, tagging us, using some hashtags that are relevant to what they do um, and that to what people would be uh, looking for. Um, and, you know, just really easy ways of, of uh, getting things out there about what you do, um, as well as um, how, you know, utilizing our equipment, our formulations um, is a benefit uh, Let's see. Um, I think one of the nice things too, uh, in this next one, I want to just put up you, they, they're talking about drought on larger trees. So, um, you know, this is a reason why they're using, um, the ArborJet system. So these are great, great opportunities. Here's the other thing too. People love pictures of pretty trees and pretty flowers. Um, if nothing else, you can kind of get a quick visual, um, and, and get yourself out there. Um, I, this is a nice one because it, they're talking, they have some nice stats in there about trees. So, you know, you can talk about why you're doing this. What's the benefit of protecting these, um, these trees. Um, this is that somebody had some professional photography done, like same thing. You don't have to go that far. Um, maybe you do. I mean, it looks really nice and it gives you, um, once you have these photos, you can use them, um, you know, all over the place, whether it's your website, social media, it uh, gives you a lot of um, opportunity to, um, you know, reuse. Um, this is a nice example of somebody, you know, being out in the field that day, and this is the problem that's happening. Um, so as Sarah, to Sarah's point, you can quickly um, alert uh, your followers to some of the things that are going on and how you can help um, to um, uh, protect their trees. Um, this is... Uh, same thing, kind of just getting it, getting out there, showing what, what they're doing, what they're able to, to provide. And I liked this one because it's the same idea where you can show like before and afters. Um, so making sure that you're taking pictures of, of the things that you're doing and the work you're doing. And this doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, you. It could be someone else in your team. Um, so, you know, that's the other thing to keep in mind too. It's like just getting the pictures and then you can always go back later and uh, put it down. Um, okay, so on to uh, print media marketing. We have a lot of print tools. Um, sometimes they get used, sometimes they don't. It really depends on, on you know, what you prefer. I mean, obviously a lot of things have moved towards digital, um, but what I like about kind of paper or, you know, material marketing is that um, it's another way of getting a touch point with somebody. And to, I mean, I look at my inbox and it's, it's full and there's, there's, there's companies that are reaching out to me that I want to hear from, but I, I am interested in what they have to say, but chances of me actually seeing it is very slim because it's just so much. Um, so I kind of like mixing it up. Um, 
I also like what I like about a piece of paper uh, or you know something that's more physical in that sense is it does give you a little bit more of a chance to be a little more verbose on what's going on, um, perhaps show um, just show a little more uh, content that uh, an imagery perhaps that you wouldn't be able to necessarily get across in a, a single um, post or on a, an email blast. So it gives you a little bit more opportunity to potentially get a little more content in there. Of course, your website can do that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes you have to say a little bit more than just, hey, buy this cool thing. This is a fun little gadget, you know. Um, and um, one of the things, too, is, like I said, it's not just uh, advertising in a um, publication or a paper or a mail, you know, like a mailer. Um, it could be something that you put into an invoice uh, stuffer type thing, uh, stickers. Um, Sarah's got some yard signs that um, she utilizes with uh, from the Ecological products. Um, we have some, you know, vehicle magnets that have been used in the past. Um, so there's there's a lot of different things. Don't be afraid to kind of um, get you know get it and play with some some other aspects of marketing and. Um, we actually, we provide the handouts, um, they're customizable, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, we also have door hangers um, and um, a few other things that, you know, you can utilize, um, pest alerts, stuff like that. Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot of options. Um, Sarah, did you have anything? I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. No, go ahead, you're good, you're okay. good, keep rolling. Um, Okay, so now what I want to do is, is talk a little bit more about some of the things that we provide uh, for you. And I'm going to actually um, stop sharing for a second and go to the um, go online. And I'm going to share different page here. Thank you. Bear with me here. Can you see that? We good? Okay. Um, what I did was I brought um, you all here to the um, arborjet.com and uh, I wanted to show you how to get to our, um, our tools, our marketing uh, materials. So you're going to, um, this, this header up here under resources um, has uh, marketing materials. As you can see, there's also uh, research, some additional training, um, a place to get to our webinars. You can also get to webinars from YouTube as well as our video library. We've got some other, um, some nice resources here. But for today, I'm right now mostly going to focus on this marketing materials page here. Okay. And we are in the process of uh, redoing our website. So we're going to have a, a new look um, soon, uh, soon to come. And, uh, but resources is going to remain there. So um, that will still be, a, this will still be a place that you can go to, um, even when the homepage looks a little different. Um, so if you come here, uh, you'll, you'll see a variety of items. Um, we have digital marketing, custom handouts, some of our catalogs, those are really just more for your reference. Uh, we have um, some pest programs and planners. We'll get into that later door hangers, like I mentioned, our pest reference guide. This tool has been really helpful. I know for a lot of people, um, our, our own you know, team as well. And um, we can I'll look at that. And then custom video, which um, we will talk to as well. So I'm going to scroll back up and I want to show you how to utilize, um, in particular, our digital marketing materials. So what we have here um, is a sampling of some of the, um, you know, more uh, either newer things that we've been talking about recently or uh, some of the items that are a little bit more popular, uh, we can always add to this. So, uh, you know, this is a work, constant work in progress um, as, you know, things kind of come up um, and as we're, you know, being asked for things. So, um, for instance, I'm going to go into Arbor Rx on uh, digital materials. So this is our new um, fertilization and soil enhancement program. And you may have seen, we have uh, some videos out there. We also have, um, we've been sending a lot of emails. We have a bunch of um, our own marketing materials and handouts and things on, on the subject. Um, but uh, for you to actually, uh, you know, get the message out to your customers, 
and let them know that you are offering this sort of a service, uh, we have an email template as well as a social image right now. And we're going to work on getting more of these. But what I, uh, what I like about one of the things we did here was we added some suggested content for you. So, you know, maybe you're still sort of figuring this out. You don't really know where to start. If you need some, you know, kind of get the juices flowing a little bit, you can just really right from here, copy and paste this content into a post. Um, we also have um, some hashtags that we're recommending you could use. So these are hashtags that we would be using. Um, so you're, you know, welcome to, to use those as well. Um, and then, so if I go right here to download social, social image, uh, the nice thing about it is it's going to open up a new tab for you. And then once you're in this new tab, sorry, I have a little uh, thing here. I gotta, so once you're in the new tab, and this is, I'm using Chrome, um, there's a download, you should be able to have a download um, option. Um, I find that to be one of the easiest ways to utilize something like this. So download it from your computer or, you know, to your phone. Um, or your tablet, however you want to, you know, kind of do that. Um, so you have it and then copy and paste and you've got some suggested content to put out there. Um, one of the things we recommend is using um, some sort of call to action. So in this situation, we said, uh, for instance, you know, click here and get prescribed today. In Instagram, you can't um, utilize links um, in the traditional format uh, unless you pay to um, boost the, the the post. Um, so there are some nuances in that kind of um, that kind of platform. But for instance, on uh, Facebook, it's really easy. You can just put your your link in there, send them to your website, um, or uh, you know, to, yeah, so they can call you or contact you by email as well, uh, wherever you want them to go. But I always recommend having some sort of call to action. What do you want them to do when they see this post? They, they find it interesting rather than maybe just liking it, um, putting a smiley face or something on it. What else can they do? Do you really, you want to make sure that they're um, going to be taking another action. Um, same thing with the email. We have a, an email template here. And like Sarah was saying, um, you can just download this as the JPEG, um, but we can also give you HTML um, coding as well. Um, this is a little bit of a longer one, um, but that's the other nice thing too. If you wanted to crop it, say you didn't want this bottom section, you could just crop the, the JPEG and just use part of it. Okay. So let me go back. Um, I'm back again. Okay, so that's some of our digital marketing. Um, we also have uh, custom handouts. So um, on the, that front for our bra Rx as well. Um, let me go into this one, same idea. So from here you can download that PDF. Um, and there's a section uh, in the middle and a lot of these it's on the bottom, but either way, it gives you a place to type in. You can actually, once you download that PDF, you can type in the company information. Um, and you, you're not limited to putting in various, you can put whatever you want there, really. Um, you could even, if you wanted to just, you know, go in there and get rid of it, um, and then, you know, put your uh, picture of your logo or something, um, whatever you want to do. But this is just a nice example of, of how you can utilize this. Um, nice thing about the back of this, just to kind of uh, keep going on this this item here is that you can use it kind of like a prescription um, like a prescription pad tear off pad so while you're on the property um, you can talk to them about about the program and what you recommend based on some of the the soil um, tree health issues that you're seeing on that property um, so that's kind of a enjoying that program there like that piece and then Probably should open this up in new tabs, but. Um, and then the pest program planners, uh, this is more tool for your internal group. Um, but one of the nice things about utilizing something like this is it does give you a time frame of, of when you should be treating. Um, so that's that's nice. And that's all done by regions. Um, except there's door hangers. It's going to be that same front where you're, you can go in there 
and download the door hanger that you would like and then get that um, sent off to a printer um, of your choice, a local printer. We do have a few still in stock, um, but very limited quantities. Um, uh, you know, we really have seen it being more used, uh, you know, on your own in terms of what's been helpful um, for you. And the, most of those do provide an area where you can um, add a business card on there. Um, but your printer could also print, you know, your specific company information. Um, and then let me go into the custom video here for a moment. Um, so this tool has been around for a long time and uh, we do we do see some use out of this. And once again, in terms of the website, um, I really think it's a great opportunity for you to talk about what you do and, and why tree injection, um, you know, makes you a, a great uh, um, person to work with uh, for plant health care. And um, we also, the nice thing with this is basically from here, you're gonna fill out the form uh, below at the bottom. Um, basically that just alerts um, Zach in the office uh, to know what kind of, um, you know, what your information is and what kind of uh, pest you want to um, speak to based on your region. Um, and then from there, and we have a nice video that's put together. It will have your logo in it. Um, and it shows a nice set of sort of sampling of what you are providing. Um, so uh, this is a really cool tool and it ends up being free. We do, um, I believe upfront gets, takes some money, but it's just so that we can uh, get things initiated with uh, a local um, video provider. And then uh, if you think you get, sorry, I shouldn't know this. Um, from there you, uh, I think you get like a bag. Oh, 150 up front, and then we um, we offset the cost once you once you've actually utilized the video. Okay, um, so I think that's the main thing I wanted to show you on the website stuff. Um, like I said, there are a lot of other resources that we can get into another time um, in terms of some of the things that we have um, utilizing, like our videos. If you wanted to uh, share one of our pest you know, videos, um, you're welcome to do all that kind of stuff. Um, utilize our blogs. A lot of people will share um, blog content or pest alerts. Uh, we have all these problems and solutions. So you can, um, if you know that there's an issue going on, we can you know, take one of these uh, pest um, pages, they're downloadable and um, from there, you can you can utilize that. I've seen people um, come to me. They'll download the pest sheet, and then uh, we've helped them put like a logo or something on there. Um, and then they've used that as a tool to send out. So um, there's a lot of options there. All right. So let me go back to hopefully I don't screw it up. <laughs> Going back to sharing the presentation, and um, and then I'm going to let Sarah take the floor. Oops. Uh, screwed it up. Sorry. We need the hold music. Kristen, while you're pulling that back up, I'll go ahead and just introduce the Hydrotain Advantage program um, without the screen. But for those of you who are not familiar with Hydrotain as a product, um, it's, a, it's a very unique solution that functions to make more soil moisture available to the plants so that plants can thrive even when rainfall or irrigation are inadequate. Um, and it's available in both liquid and granular options. And several years ago, um, in working with this, this product, and when we first started working more with landscape contractors, um, originally the product was used primarily for, for, for golf and sports turf when it was just available as a liquid. And when we started experiencing uh, a greater opportunity to work with landscape contractors um, over the years, particularly as watering restrictions have come into place in various areas and as droughts have gotten worse, uh, we, we recognize the need to help service providers be able to market this product. Um, it was part of what Kristen was saying earlier today. Um, if you don't necessarily have the opportunity to, 
to do all of your own marketing for you. Um, we felt like we could do some things um, for you to make it a little easier. So we started off with um, envelope stuffers that could go into invoices. And, um, and even in our digital era, those have still been very popular. A lot of applicators like to put those out. They're still sending out mailed um, invoices um, or if they're leaving, uh, if you're leaving door hangers, you can slip those into your door hangers. Um, we also started offering things like vehicle magnets and um, lawn signs. So this is a member-based program. It's completely free to join, but when you sign up for the program, um, you'll have the opportunity to, to go through training and uh, um, events. You can do an, an in-person training or training via webinar like this. Um, we then have free marketing materials that we can make available to you, such as the envelope stuffers, those, the, the mailers, e-blasts. Um, some of the digital materials are a little bit newer that we've started offering those in the last uh, couple of years, and we're going to be adding some things um, to that. We're actually in the middle of upgrading the entire program right now. So this season, the program's getting an upgrade to add a lot more digital components to it. Um, and we're also going to be adding in a reward program. So for uh, the members that um, have joined, um, new or existing, they'll have an opportunity to start uh, sending in their invoices and based on product purchase, we'll be able to, to get things back, whether that be things like wearables, hats for their team, jackets, shirts, um, or marketing materials, um, and even potentially things like um, gift cards or additional tools, watering tools um, that you can use as part of your business. Uh, but right now we have an image library available that you can utilize um, the before and after images that we've collected uh, to be able to put on your website. Um, you can utilize any of our content. Um, and then of course, those mailers, those lawn signs and those uh, vehicle magnets are, are available um, as well. So just wanted to show a couple of examples of what some of our service providers have done with, with our materials. Um, so far, we've got an example in the middle of the screen there is a one of those envelope stuffers where um, the company we've been working with for a long time, um, good customer, they reached out, we were able to actually put their logo on the, the mailer and have them printed that way. So they were completely customized to that customer. Um, we've also done some recently an, an e-blast um, that ABC Pest Control was able to, to take advantage of. This is one of those examples where we were able to take that JPEG image of all the content relating to Hydertain and put it into MailChimp. And then usual, utilizing MailChimp as an email service, uh, put their logo across the top, put their contact information at the bottom of the email, along with all of their social links. And, and that goes out as a very nice professional looking uh, email that, um, that has all kinds of content, contact information for that company, all their different location offices. Um, and it is immediately asking their customers, hey, or telling their customers, hey, we're also on these social channels, so connect with us here. Um, and then of course the lawn signs um, are a great way to show neighbors what, um, you know, why, why their neighbor's lawn looks so good and so healthy. It's a great way to attract new business. Um, these lawn signs do have a, a spot on the other side uh, where you could put in your phone number if you wanted to turn it to, to the flip side or a lot of our applicators will use our lawn signs right next to their business lawn signs so that the connection is made between the service that's been provided in their company. Um, and, uh, and just to, to share a little uh, quote from one of our uh, longtime customers is that, you know, the flyers that they put in their renewal paperwork upsold 15 customers for the program without any other work. They just simply put a flyer in and immediately got calls for, for 15 um, new applications with the, with the product. Um, and so they immediately came back to us and asked for additional um, uh, flyers that they could put into their next set of application in their next series. Um, as I mentioned, this program is completely free to join um, and um, you can enroll at hydrotain.com um, under the landscape contractors tab or directly hydrotain.com slash advantage dash hydrotain dash advantage dash program. Cool. I want to I admit I uh, want to back up for a second. Um, I also wanted to touch on our um, Saving America's Iconic Trees program. So this was uh, something we, we launched a couple of years ago. Uh, this is something we've always kind of been doing uh, since the beginning of ArborJet, um, but we really kind of just thought it would be nice to uh, put a little bit of a, 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 you know, wrap it up in a nice little bow, so to speak. 
Um, and one of the nice things about this program, though, is it in terms of uh, working with your regional technical manager, uh, it gives you an opportunity, one, to um, you know, engage with them a little bit better, get a better relationship, to um, utilize this as an opportunity for some training, make sure your, you know, all your team is there and everybody knows um, you know, how, how to you know, utilize our equipment and maybe what some of the quirks are and um, you know, best practices. Um, but it's also a great way to get local media um, or, you know, local um, professionals or people within the municipality and the community to come out and see what's going on, see what you can provide um, and the benefits of, uh, you know, protecting the, the, the trees um, within the community. So uh, we, on, you know, just on, on our own are working um, to, you know, promote these, this program. Um, we have our PR um, person, uh, Kelly, she does, um, she'll send out a release to the local media um, and, you know, we'll get some good pickup. And if we have, you know, if we can schedule it far enough in advance, it gives us an opportunity to, to really kind of get some little bit of buzz going locally. Um, so I would really recommend taking advantage of this. Um, if you have a, a, you know, a nice stately tree uh, in your community that it needs help, um, you can partner with us and, and we'll, uh, we'll help you to, to get that tree treated. Um, and you know, we, we've, we've done trees all over the country at this point. Um, these three happen to be all ash, but we've done um, some oaks and uh, I think a ficus. Um, there's been a, a handful of different trees and, and things like that. So it kind of just depends on you know, what's, uh, what's around in your area um, and maybe what the you know, kind of key thing is that's going on. But um, we'll be, I think, uh, Corey, I think you were on the call too. We're gonna be doing some spruce trees. Um, so really, um, a really nice opportunity to, to get a little buzz locally for, for your business. All right, so. So I touched on a lot of these other little additional resources. Um, like I said, it, they're not necessarily as specific as, um, as like a, you know, an email template, but uh, they're always something that can be utilized, even if it's just to kind of get an idea for some content. Um, if you wanted to put something on your website or put a blog post together, um, use us as a resource, use your, um, your RTM as a resource. Um, if you have ideas and things, um, that uh, you're looking for, uh, connect with them because uh, they're going to be able to either put you in the right direction uh, in terms of things that, that we have, or um, they'll send, uh, send you to me uh, and, and, uh, and the team, uh, and we can you know, try to help you from there. Um, a little bit on Arbor Mobile. Um, so this has been around for a bit and uh, we are in the process of making some new updates to it. Uh, I think right now it's not available in Google because we have a heavier, it's a heavier app. So we have a lot of uh, content on the app that would need to live on your phone right now um, or your mobile device. And Google and Apple don't like that. So they're in the process right now of really pushing our apps um, across the board to be more, um, more in the cloud, more cloud-based apps. So we are working to um, make some updates there. Unfortunately, if you are in an area that doesn't have the best service, um, there might be some functionality to this that you're not gonna be able to utilize. Um, but if we don't move in this direction, then uh, we, you won't be able to have the app at all. So unfortunately, uh, we're kind of in a tough spot there because once again, uh, we have a lot of information to, to give. Um, so, uh, but we're, we are in the process of getting that updated. So hopefully, um, hopefully soon we'll have a new app um, that will be nice and light and easy for you to use um, and won't take up too much data on your phone. Um, so if there's nothing else, uh, Sarah, I mean, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but um, I thought this would be a nice opportunity before we wrap things up to, um, you know, open it up a little bit for a discussion and, and see if there's anything that you wanted to share about what you do that's successful um, and if there's anything else that you would need from us. So uh, Kevin Brewer are, um, would like to share some experience that he has. Hey, can everybody hear me? Yeah. 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 All right. So. Some things, uh, <clears throat> I'm the Northeast technical manager for ArborJet. Um, I used to be the general manager for a 
pretty successful tree preservation company in Rhode Island. And some of the best ways we were able to make the mar marketing very effective was, you know, to target it. And the best way to do that is to, you know, it sounds obvious, but know your customer's property. So we pretty much, once we instituted the policy of making a tree inventory, every time we did a bid on someone's property, you know, where the trees were, even if they weren't talking about the oak in the back left of the house, we wrote down that they had one. And, you know, then we started keeping an eye on, you know, what pests were close that might affect oak trees. So then we could, you know, specifically say, you know, Oakwell is now in your area, you have an oak on the back left of your house. You know, it's a, you know, pretty significant change in your landscape. And it was very targeted marketing. Uh, we did this for, you know, Oakwell, EAB, crab apples for rust, um, you know, and all these things. And, you know, it worked a lot better once we personalized that message because sending out marketing and just saying, you know, we do emerald ash borer treatments are great, but a lot of the customers don't know they own an ash tree. Um, you know, they rely on us as, as the expert to, to kind of tell them they do. You know, they won't usually call till it's too late. So having those inventories and, and directly going after those properties is, is the way to go. And, and having a way to go through it. You know, if you can go through all your records, if somebody spent the money to put a cable in a tree or to trim it, they'll probably put money into it to save it. So, you know, those are the number one trees to start targeting is those ones you know people are already going after. Um, and another way we were able to get the tree inventories up on um, our existing customers is, is knowing that people don't know what kind of trees they have. But nowadays, people are very interested in knowing. So we sent out a flyer saying, we'll do a free tree inventory for you and just walk the property with somebody for like a half hour, tell them what kind of trees they own. And quite a bit, actually, we'd sell some pruning work and plant healthcare on the spot because you're already there as, as, as an expert to help them. So they, they trust what you're saying. So offering free inventories, doing inventories with sales and, and really tying that together with the invasive insects coming your way um, was a great way for us to, to really, you know, expand our plant healthcare market much faster than most companies did. And, you know, we got a lot of this done just going through the records on, on winter work, on rainy days, instead of taking the day off, we had the guys come in and just start going through customer lists on what people owned for trees and then start coming up with areas to really focus on what pests were in what towns. And, and that's how we really tied it all together. So with, you know, all the great advice Kristen and Sarah have on, on the pest pages, you know, if you direct them to the customers with those pests and trees, it'll go, it'll go a long ways. Thanks for sharing, Kevin. You're welcome. Excellent advice, Kevin. And one, one of the things to add to that is you, you mentioned customers not knowing what kind of trees that they have or um, what kind of plants that they have. Um, that can be a great way to utilize your email marketing is to send pictures to your customers. And when you're talking about a specific pest issue in an area or a specific issue in general in an area, showing the customer what that looks like, the images in the email, um, maybe just enough for them to go, hey, that's, I, that looks familiar. I have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Anything else? Uh, Corey, what did you say? You had a little stat this morning. Let's see. He said um, 50 to 60 percent of um, businesses right now should be uh, renewal. So if, in terms of uh, if you were to send an email out, um, a lot of that should just be renewing business um, and an opportunity to cross sell on, on other um, services. Um, so, you know, I think really for some minimal effort um, with some of the tools that we are providing you, um, I think you could get some successful, uh, you know, marketing out there. Um, any other comments or things that, that you found have worked or that, that you feel like you need from us? If not, feel free to, um, you know, send a note over. Uh, let me uh, see if I can get this to the next slide. There we go. Um, here's in terms of contact, uh, we have, we have the whole uh, country covered here for you. So, um, there's a lot of people that you can reach out to, um, and a lot of support that's available. Um, so, you know, please, uh, this is all on the website, um, as well. And, uh, you know, please feel free. Sarah and I are, uh, you know, available, especially in terms of, um, ideas or things that, that you need from us. Um, and uh, so thank you. And if, yeah, so if something comes up, feel free to uh, send over an email. Um, 
Oh, Corey, let's see. You want something about um, SEO? Yeah, can you hear me now, Kristen? Yes, yeah. Okay, good. Um, just, just for the business owners out there, something that uh, when, you, when you're working, when you're selling to a homeowner, um, keep in mind with the search engine optimization that they're most likely not typing in chlorosis. They're probably typing in something like yellow tree or they're not, you know, they, so make sure you're, you're tailoring some of those messages on your website to that. That's all. No, that's a good point. And uh, we've tried to do some of that with our, um, our handouts and things like that. Um, it's actually been, uh, I've been pulling my hair out a little bit. It's, you know, it gets bigger as the day goes sometimes um, as I, I try to get the, um, you know, the marketing group that we work with for our, all of our materials. They're so used to talking to um, the service providers, talking to you folks and not the, the homeowner. Um, and so I had to kind of constantly be like, no, they don't care about the bottle or they don't care about like getting the treatment done quickly. Like the homeowner wants to know that, is their tree going to look good? How, you know, is their grass going to be green? Um, and, and, you know, things like that. So um, I'm, I'm always trying to kind of switch gears on that front too. Um, so I, I know it can be um, on, on my end, it can be tricky to try to, to think about um, how I need to sell a little bit differently. Um, so it's a very good point um, that I've been, you know, you doing as we've been updating these, um, these documents that we have available for you is that it's really more about what that, what that um, homeowner is looking for um, and what's important to them and how they're actually thinking. So like I said, they're not going to know the, the very specific terms, probably not even going to know what the, you know, the bug or the disease is called. They're just going to see these black spots or they're going to see something chewing on their leaves or, um, or dead grass. So, um, yeah, it's a very good point. Thank you. All right. Well, um, so we still have a handful of webinars coming up. Um, and if you've missed any of the other ones, let's see, there it is. Um, they're on the website, uh, or rather I would go to YouTube. Um, so we've got everything posted on YouTube right now from the last few weeks of webinars that we've been doing. Um, and, uh, in this situation, it's a little different. Unfortunately, we, we really can't offer, um, any kind of ISA credits or anything like that. Um, cause we're, you know, talking about ourselves so much, but, uh, there's a lot of the, um, the webinars that we are offering that are, um, you know, do have credits available. So, uh, I 